I got all ready to start recording and then there was a boom car making noise all of a sudden, like right before I pushed record. Um, I finished rereading 1984. Now I read that. I, I really think it was junior high because by the time I got to high school, I was really only reading Cliff Notes. Um, <laughs> that's what I, and I know I read that whole book. Um, so it's amazing because I, I always grew up having a healthy fear of ending up in a world that was like that book. And so I remembered it very well. You know, I'm not a reader. I don't like, but I remembered this book very well. I know I had seen the movie, not at the time. But um, probably sometime later, because I would have watched it on video. I would have got it myself. So probably I'll say I saw it in my early twenties or something. But I don't, I don't remember the movie having as much in there. Um, I I see that it's on Tubi, or it was on Tubi. I saw that it was on Tubi last week. I hope it's still there because I would like to be watch it. But um, anyway, as I'm reading it, rereading it. I'm got the book and I, there were a couple times where I'm looking at the book and I'm just like oh. and I'm reading it and I just go oh. just a couple times where I'm like I thought I knew everything and then there's things that are popping up from right now that even though I already think we're we're headed towards where we're already in the beginning of how they ended up in that dystopian society there are things that details in the book that I just forgot and I'm just like oh my god and the one that's really sticking out to me is yesterday when I was reading and then the guy was telling him stuff and he's like your truth you know and it was your and italics and it was like your truth you will tell me your truth and I, w I was sitting in the park reading this and I you literally went because I have been complaining about this idea of my truth, your truth. This is something that from me, people were, have only been saying in the last little while. Um, I feel like I didn't even hear that until it started being used around the Me Too movement and people saying that they were, you know, harmed in some way. And I'm saying you have to let people speak their truth or, you know what I mean? That's when I feel like I start. So that's not that long ago. Like I said, everything that I really feel is so bad, really, I can place right before, right before Trump, the year before Trump became president. So to me, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the things that have snowballed and really made us this society... Uh, thought police and everything really started around that time. I'm, I mean, of course, there's always people trying to control. There's always people trying to censor. And like I said, years and years and years ago, the one talk show host started with the idea of banning a word, which I knew was wrong. It was always wrong, not just because of books like this, but because of book banning and because of um, the witch trials. And all these things you heard about in history that were just flat out wrong, you know, scarlet letters, everything else, you know. So I'm sitting there reading this and then it said your truth. And I was like, I really felt like I hadn't heard that until the last five years. Here it's sitting in the book and this is one of the bad guys telling him and just the distinction of your truth and it being italicized like this. Okay, I'm, I'm sitting there going, see, it's not me. There's no, this, in right here in this page in this book, he's making a delineation that this bad man is trying to let this person think or trying to convince this person that there is a, his truth instead of the truth. And as if truth, there's different truths. There are not different truths. I've said this previously in other videos. There is one truth. There is the truth. And people get together. They can talk. They can discuss and try to get to the truth. If people are investigating a crime, there's only one truth and who committed that crime. So they have to 
do research and investigations to get to the truth. You know what I mean? You have to investigate. You have to find out. You have to prove. You have to find out the truth. The one and only truth. There's one truth. Okay? And that's a fact. That's what happened. It's not a theory. It's not your feelings. It's not your opinion. It's not your interpretation. The truth is the truth is the truth. It's only one truth. And that's what is really real, what really happened, what really exists, and that that truth, everybody would have that same truth because there's only one. There's only one truth. Okay? So, if two people are in a relationship and something happens, and they tell their friends and these people over here, and they're not both telling their truths. Their truths cannot be different. Somebody smacked somebody, somebody abused somebody. The truth is what actually happened between those two people. That's the truth. There's no separate truths. Well, I was doing this and she was doing that. Or I said this and she didn't say that. Or There's no he said, he said, she said. There's two different things. But the truth is what actually happens. And that goes for any kind of situation, not just... Like I said, it started to sound around the time of the Me Too movement where I was hearing you have to let people speak their truth and blah, blah, blah. Okay. But it's through these actual situations and actual problems that exist in the world that actually need taken care of that the powers that be or the, the, the evildoers or whatever sneak in and get their agendas through via these channels and they take over the narrative or they start interjecting their vocabulary to get everybody, especially people on social media, especially young people, to start using verbiage as a norm. They start changing the meanings of words. These are all things I've talked about. This is all you know, in the book. <laughs> so I've seen some of these things happening. I recognize them as being things from the book. They've happened so rapidly over the last, like I said, four, five, six years. Um, and it's funny. I wasn't planning on making videos. I was feeling a bit different about things and I wanted to focus my mind on more practical matters. And this morning, again, I was on Twitter just... I go on Twitter to find out what's going on. It's not as useful as it once was. You used to be able to go on there, check your timeline to get the information from the people you follow, and then in the trending topics, if something was happening, a news, breaking news story was happening, you would see the trending topic, you would click on it, and you find out, you know, somebody died, there was a catastrophe, there was a natural disaster, you know. Now it's, it's a lot of names and things of just whatever the kids are talking about that really isn't important. So Twitter is not what is no longer the information source that it used to be. Um, I think that's because of the way it's manipulated, probably. But and most people using it probably don't care about anything important. You know, they care more about who, which K-pop star wore what outfit or whose birthday it is among the K-pop people and taking over hashtags with all their K-pop stands because they don't agree with the hashtag. So Twitter's kind of been ruined just by the users, even if it's not being manipulated by the people who control it. But um, today, this morning, Big Lie is trending. And I'm thinking, okay, what's that? And I click on it and I don't know who, I don't know, it's trending three different ways. Like Liz Cheney said something about the big lie referring to former President Trump on July, on January 6th. Um, somebody else was referring to the big lie of CNN. But it's all, it's not just the big lie. It's capitalized. The big lie. Like Big Brother is capitalized. Yeah. And I'm looking at it and I'm like... It just made me think about the truth again. Made me think about what I just read about your truth. And um, 
as somebody, like I said, I, I, I'm not special, I'm not wonderful, but I know for the people I've been around for most of my life, even though, depending on what issues we're talking about, we're talking about inter, interpersonal issues, we're talking about, you know, <laughs> evidence, whatever, most people lie on a daily basis. I don't see myself as someone who does that. I have always thought the truth was very important. I always tell the truth. And I know that other people know that about me because I am unliked. Because I tell truth people don't want to hear. You know, um, I learned as, a long time ago when I was younger to not tell people how bad they look in that outfit. I try not to do that. I try to keep it to myself unless I think they're going to make a fool of themselves. Then I'll have to tell them. But, um, so I don't try to be brutally honest with people who didn't ask for that. But I still tell the truth about things and as time's gone on I see fewer and fewer people not only telling the truth but fewer and fewer people who want to hear the truth and the more people change their face and chase money and try to make things change what the word love means and um, cheapen it or you know just use words incorrectly and the dumbing down of words. I've been saying they were dumbing down of words. And when you talk especially to some people online. They misuse certain words in a way. Like they will use. Like I said with words like rape. They put a lot of things under that word now. Instead of using all the words we have. To describe all the different things that happen to a person. They just use that word for everything. I remember them calling. Uh, when he was supposed to be getting an Oscar, maybe Casey Affleck, a rapist. Okay. And <laughs> many people said that. And I read the, all the allegations. There was no rape in there. You know? Um, and anybody who got accused of anything, all the kids and all the people on social media who only vaguely read things started calling everybody a rapist. And rape is a very specific thing. And that's the first word I noticed in terms of, again, we have to go back to me too, but just being thrown around. And there was the other actor, friend of his, who said there was a spectrum and people would not allow that. They would not allow for the fact that there was a spectrum, that there was a, a, a shades of gray. There are different degrees of things because to the young people, everything's the same. The other word, one letter removed, racist, is another word that people use for everything. And I've brought it before, prejudice, bigot, all the other words people could use, <laughs> but everything is racist. Say somebody is predominantly attracted to, I don't know, Asian people. Somebody will call that person a racist because they don't want to date everybody else because they're not attracted for whatever reason to everybody else. A racist, as I said before, when I was growing up, the word racist was very specific to mean somebody who really, really hated people and who really, really wanted to do them harm. And you may call somebody of a lesser degree prejudice or something else. But like I said, that doesn't go anymore. It's just everybody's a racist. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they will say everybody is a racist, which cheapens the word for when you're talking about real racists who would do people harm, who were severely impact their lives, stop them from moving up in the world based solely on their race. Those are races, people who burn crosses on people's lawns, people who are in the Klan. Those are racists, you know, a dad or old fashioned dad who doesn't want their daughter marrying outside of their own, <sighs> may be a bigot, may be prejudiced, may have certain ideas, but he's not killing anybody. He got bad ideas, you know, but that's not, everything isn't equal. So using words, using the same word for every single thing, this is exactly what was in the book, that they were making fewer and fewer words. And I'm sitting there and I'm at the point, I'm reading this book and I'm saying to myself, I have been saying that we were turning into 1984. I've been saying that the kind of government we have, and I've just been thinking about them wanting to have control and I've been thinking about them wanting to just be powerful. And because before, even not without thinking about the book, 
you know that people who go into government, you know that general people want to have power. People want to have power. You know, I take the bus. I've complained about the bus. Bus drivers act like the bus is their kingdom. And they will treat bus passengers as if they are their, you know, their, what do you want to call it? Um, what is the word? Surfs or something like that. Like, whatever their rules for the bus are, go. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you see this in people over time. They want power over other people. That's why some people are just controlling. A controlling husband. A controlling person. Like the, the lawyer I just dealt with. There are people who... They want to have power over other people. That's how they get off. They could just be some person, you know, at the store who's giving you a hard time when you're trying to cash out your stuff. Or they could be Joffrey Baratheon. You know, that's what these people get off on. That's what they need because they have no personal power in themselves. So they want power. And that's, that to me was enough to explain everything that's going on in the world right now. But I'm sitting there yesterday really reading, the, you know, a good chunk of the end of this book. And I'm saying to myself, okay, I've been saying 1984. I, were they actually using this as a manual on how to control people? Are they actually using <laughs> this book on how to take complete power over the world? And I'm just looking at it going, I know we all, or we all read it back in the old days. It seems like these kids don't read anything anymore. And that would be part of the system trying to stop people from thinking for themselves. And I get that. But I'm reading it and I'm saying to myself, I think they used this book. I think they said, how are we going to do this? Hey, remember that book, 1984? Hey, yeah, let's all use it as our strategy. Because they're literally doing what it says. Like, things I forgot, details I forgot that were in this book. Like, your truth. That really just, I mean... You could have smacked me in the face with a fish right then, you know? <laughs> I was like, even though all along I've been saying, this is 1984, we're headed towards 1984, I can't believe it. And there was a shirt, I did see a shirt that somebody had made, you know, 1984 is not supposed to be a manual or something, or a user's manual or something like that. But... It didn't really hit me until me. And I'm like, I think they did actually use this book to enslave us all. And for the reasons it says, I'm not spoiling the book for you, but the reasons it says is the reason that I've known. So when other people get to the end and they're shocked, I'm not shocked either because I've retained this information from this book all these years without realizing that's where I got my information from. Or just from watching people, watching movies, seeing how power plays out in the world and how desperate people are to use it. Seeing the why, besides the how, I've known for years that it's just, I've been studying myself and people without majoring in it or without getting a degree in it. I've been watching people and studying people all these years. I've been watching movies and watching characters and seeing how they behave and trying to use that information in life. It doesn't protect me. It doesn't help me. But I've known the truth of what the situation is for a very, very long time. But to see, to reread this book and see it in print and see it happening and saying, this is what they, they I'm my stomach's growling because I eat oatmeal. <laughs> to see it, um, Playing out as if they really used this book, George Orwell's 1984, as a playbook, as a manual, as a tool to take over the world. Not just thinking, oh, we people weren't paying attention and we fell into this, or, oh, if people had just understood. It really looks like the people who have created the situation, use this book. There is a person who is Big Brother, or I think is Big Brother. I'll never say this person's name, but I'm at the end of my rope. I was gonna try to be practical and try to, and then I saw that trending on Twitter. 
the big lie. And I'm like, the lie is the truth. Freedom is slavery. War is peace. What was the other one? <laughs> you know? It's, I would love to say frightening, but I'm so not shocked because like I said, I've had this information inside of me all these years. I've seen it play out. I thought we were accidentally turning into that, but it honestly looks like they, the they, are using it as a playbook. They're literally copying out of this book how they are running this world. I don't understand why people haven't read it. I don't understand people older than me who haven't read it. Like I said, I think I read it in junior high, which is like 12, 13 years old. Um, it's been around long before I was born. So I've said before, I think it's almost too late now, but to just see it and it was just when, I mean, I was, I was kept looking and going, oh my God, it's really just like this. Oh my God. But then when I saw your truth, like I said, I was just like, the kids say gobsmacked. I was your truth. I will always tell you, unless they get me, that there is one truth, the truth, not mine, not yours. The only way you get to the truth is by investigating and finding out or knowing that that's what happened. There's no, well, I think this happened. Well, I think that happened. Well, here's my evidence. Well, here's my evidence. Somewhere in all those differences of opinions, somewhere in all those mixed up memories, there is a truth. Maybe we're getting to the point where they won't let us get to it. They won't let us discuss. They won't let us investigate. But there is only one truth on anything. There's only one thing happened. The people who are saying lies right now, they're the liars. The people accusing somebody of a big lie, they are the liars. The more you tell the truth yourself, about yourself in your life the more you know what the truth sounds like people who've been lying every day to get ahead they've been lying since they were little kids they they lied to cover up their mistakes they lied to cover up the horrible shit they did they don't know what's the truth anymore because they don't know what it sounds like because they don't say it you have to keep telling the truth all the time or you won't know what it sounds like either. I don't know how long we're going to last. I don't know how quickly things are going to spiral out of control. They've been spiraling. I miss the guy who was there last year. I feel really bad about things. I haven't felt like I've known what was going on since January. I feel like I'm just being propaganded and told fairy tales all day long on the news. Um, I feel like it's too late. I, I want, I'm not scared because it's something like scared because it's like, I feel like I'm walking to, into certain death. I feel like I'm, I know exactly where I'm going, but I don't know where. I know that I'm walking into something very bad. I know that the future is dark. I really wish it wasn't. We're going to need a miracle for that. And that's going to take people being good and I don't want to say raising your vibration because that makes it silly. Just being truthful. Be honest, be truthful as much as you can every day. And that's the only thing that can raise us all up. 
that's the only thing that can set us free at this point is everybody telling the truth even if it's inconvenient for you tell the truth all day long even if it's hard even if you mess up a few times tell the truth next time just keep telling the truth 